Hi, welcome to the breadboard. You might be guessing based on the tools that are sitting right in front of me what this episode is about and you would probably be right. It's all about soldering irons, desoldering tools and basically working with uh, components to get them on and off of boards. For the last probably 30 plus maybe nearly 40 years I've been using a trusty Weller soldering iron for all of my mainstay soldering and desoldering exercises. Of course, for desoldering, this will only melt the solder, it won't pull anything off. So, I've been using a uh, solder sucking tool like this one, where you have a little plunger, you put it near the molten solder while you're heating it with the tip on the other side, and then you push the button and it goes and tries to suck the solder out into this chamber. It's a little bit crude, it does work, um, but now with more modern components with so, uh, surface mount and things, you run the risk of actually sucking the component up into the soldering, desoldering tool along with it. The same with the soldering iron, when you're starting to work with smaller surface mount components, it's rather um, crude and overpowered for that kind of thing. So you need something a little more finesse. Plus this one uses what they call a magnostat tip which is uh, the, the base of the tip has a magnet built into it and when it gets up to temperature, the magnet actually demagnetizes and releases a switch internally that then turns off the power. Then of course when it cools down, it remagnetizes and it attracts the switch back and starts heating it back up again. So relatively crude in the uh, temperature control side of things. But it is quite powerful and it can do some quite large um, PCB surface areas including desoldering transformers and other things that have a fairly uh, heat sucking capacity in them so it does quite well but you know in, use, in recent years with surface mount technology I've had to start doing some airflow uh, soldering using a hot air gun so to that extent I bought a Sake 898D uh, from eBay and it's not bad but the fan is built into the handle here um, I'm not sure how good it is for anti-static or anything, but it does struggle. Even though it looks like it's got a big heating element here, it does struggle to heat up a lot of work, and it's a little bit crude, and the wires are a little bit short um, from it. It does automatically turn off when you put it back on the base, which is nice, and it came with a small pencil-like soldering iron as well. Um, I ultimately wanted this to replace the Weller, but it worked out that this had nowhere near the heat capacity in the tip to be able to do a lot of the work that I use for the Weller. So I've kept on using the Weller. Now recently with talking with RS Components, um, they wanted to send me a few things for my bench and that's great, but the soldering iron, um, some of the ones that they had were 240 volt only, but what they've done is they've arranged with Weller to send me one of their latest workstations, which now has arrived and I'm going to share with you, which is going to be a really nice upgrade to my bench uh, to be able to allow me to do better videos for you and everything else. And the nice thing is this is one of the very latest, it's literally just this last week been certified for sale in North America. It's been for sale in Europe for a little while, but it's still very new. It has the capability to drive three tools simultaneously. Anyway, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's have a quick, little bit of a closer look at the tools that I've currently got, and then we will unbox the new soldering station and have a look at what I've got with it. I uh, feel kind of like it's Christmas for me. And uh, so let's go have a look. So here we have a lot of the tools, but well, these are actually the main tools that I've been using for um, all of my tutorials and things for the last couple of years. And of course, the Weller iron here I have had since I was about 17, so a long, long time. Uh, it served me very, very well. I used to live in England, so when I came to North America, to Canada, I changed the transformer in it to be a 110 volt instead of a 240 volt one. But outside of that, I haven't had to replace anything in this in all that time, except perhaps a tip. I you know, had to replace a tip. The magnostat inside, or the switch part of it, is starting to be um, a little bit flaky. I know if I take this apart, I may not get it back together again and have it working because the switch has been uh, very reliable up to now, but it is starting to uh, fall apart a little bit. So um, anyway, I, I've been reluctant to get rid of this because it has been such a nice soldering iron. Um, it's still based on using the uh, wet sponge with a bit of water kind of 
uh, cleaning for the soldering iron tip and the new sake that I got which is basically a uh, there's a lot of different companies sell these with different brand names on eBay was only about eighty dollars which is relatively cheap as far as soldering irons go and it get, did as I said it gave me the hot air gun and it gave me this little soldering thing but still based on the wipe on a wet sponge kind of thing and it's a little bit flaky I mean it works you can set the temperature I'm not sure how accurate it is, but you know it, it really is not living up to the expectations and delivering what I need. And with a lot of newer boards, like I've got a little one here, this is pretty typical of what would be required to solder these days. So you can see a very, very small 14 or 16 pin chip. You've got to try and do these tiny, tiny pads you want to solder onto. You want to have a really uh, well-controlled hot air gun or soldering iron to be able to do that without damaging any of the parts and if you're removing it as well same thing and when it comes to removing resistors and things like that from boards I've often had to resort to using two soldering irons one on each side of the surface mount resistor trying to flick the thing off which again is um, you know good luck if you want to be able to reuse that component once you've got it off if you're just taking it off for test purposes uh, you could be damaging it quite easily by using that kind of technique um, again, for taking solder off of boards, if you're removing components, you know, it's uh, solder wick uh, is one thing, but you're applying a lot of heat over a, a more general area and you run the risk of damaging other components too, especially with surface mount. And with the solder sucker, because of the nature of the way it plunges, um, you do run the risk of either sucking up a small surface mount component into it um, or basically damaging tracks and things like that. So all of these things could do with a bit of an upgrade. And of course, you've got your regular leaded solder or your um, lead-free solder that you can use nowadays too, which requires different temperatures. And of course, my Weller, uh, you can change the tips to different temperature ones, but they're hard to get a hold of now and quite expensive. And of course, you know, you don't really want to have to start wait for your iron to cool down, change the tip, power it up, clean it, and everything else just because you want to change to a different kind of solder. You really want to be able to just uh, wipe it clean, um, change the temperature with a dial, and away you go. So much, much easier. Anyway, so this is all what I've been using up to now, and so now it's time to pull up the boxes that I've got and show you what's arrived from Weller, courtesy of Irish Components and Weller together. So let's go get it on the bench and start opening it. So, as you can see, the new soldering iron is a tad bigger than the old one, which I've put at the back there for now. Um, it's a WXR3 soldering station, WXR3003 to be precise. Uh, Weller Tools from Germany, and it's been supplied to me by the local Apex Tool Group here in Canada, in Ontario. So... Um, this is a complete workstation, not just a soldering arm, which is one of the reasons why it's so big. So it's, and it weighs oh, nearly 30 pounds as well, which is quite a bit more heavier than the previous one. So let's just get these boxes out of here. All right, so let's just put that one aside for the moment. So this one, I think, is the base. Um, this is the WXR3 120 volt. As I said, this has just been certified um, I would have had it a, a couple of weeks ago, but it hadn't been certified in North America. So, well, I had to wait until it was certified before they could send me one. And that's now been done. So, uh, here it is. So, let's just open this one up. Compulsory foam packaging. So, this is the new base station. It's uh, quite considerably larger than the previous one. As you can see here, you've got three outlets and you've got various airflow and vacuum um, connections as well for various tools. Nice LCD display and a control panel. And on the back, we have the power input. We've got two communications, RS-232 kind of connectors. Well, they're phone type connectors, but they're RS-232 standard and a USB. So yes, this is a smart base controller. The other one, it was basically just a transformer and that was it. So that's the new base. And as you can see, compared to the old one, it's actually only not quite twice the size, about twice the depth, twice the width, about the same height, but it does way, way more. So let's just get that out the way again. So next box in here, 
let's just open this one up. Uh, polystyrene boxes. So let's open this one up. And ooh, lots and lots of toys in here. So we have three bases. Let's just get that zoomed in a little bit. So what we have in here, we've got a three soldering iron bases. We have a pencil soldering iron tip. We'll take some closer up views of these in a moment. Let me just move this out of the way so I can pull them out as we look at them. So here is the new base for the iron. So now instead of using wet sponges, it's got this little uh, ball of um, brass. It's like a pad, Brillo pad kind of thing, but for cleaning the iron. So let's go to the next one. Let's pull the base out. So here's the next base. Slightly different mounting. And here, with a great big long cable we have the new desoldering tool so that will just go in not that one nope there's another base here a third base so this one's going to go in here so that's for the desoldering and then here we have a hot air gun now in this case it doesn't have the fan in here this is 200 watt um, heating element according to what's written on the side here um, but the airflow actually comes from the base unit over here so again you've got plug on the end with the uh, airflow connection and that would go in that socket so that's the three bases that we have we have what looks like a bit of a tool kit with uh, some additional solder desoldering uh, tips for different sizes We'll have a closer look at those in a moment. We have a cleaning tool kit for the iron. And we have last bag here. Um, oh, the one component I haven't mentioned yet, which is an actual um, pick and place tool for the goes with the station as well. It's not a heated one, but it's actually for when you're placing surface mount components and you want to be able to delicately pick them up and place them onto uh, the workpiece. So what we have here is a little suction cup that you plug this into the vacuum and then you can just uh, holding this, just uncable that, you just can control and you pick up the pieces with this state with this tool and uh, drop them just by covering a little hole you can enable and disable the vacuum and just pick up the components and put them down without actually having to touch them with your fingers which is really really nice so we'll have a closer look at that and try that out in a little while as well that's everything out of that box and I actually do have another box so I did get two more packages arrived. This smaller one I'll show in a moment. So this one, just pull it out. And there's another packet in the bottom of there. This one here came actually a couple of weeks ago, but I wasn't able to do anything with it because without the base, it really wouldn't work very well. And what we have in here is another base with a different fitting. And what I really like here is what this is. This is a pair of soldering tweezers, the WXMTMS, uh, 12 volts at 80 watts. And this is so that you can actually solder and remove various components from a surface mount board by heating both sides with a single tool and using a single hand so much much better than using the double soldering iron kind of technique that I was describing earlier. So this again just plugs right into the soldering station. So that is the complete set and that has its own stand as well. So uh, 
more manuals. What else is in here? Oh, more hose connectors. So let me just get rid of the, uh, the packaging out of the way. Oh, I've got two more bags here that I haven't opened yet. So the first one here, another package. This actually was the this package was the first one that arrived. It was like, oh, okay. So what this one is is actually a very very fine soldering tip to go on the soldering iron. Right, this one is probably, uh, what does it say? It is uh, 1.6 millimeters in size for the tip. So very handy for those tiny, tiny pieces. And we have a soldering tip, really, really small, which is 0.4 millimeters on this one. So really tiny for those tiniest of components. And that is so far everything that I have that has come in the mail for this replacement soldering iron. As you can see, it is a massive upgrade. So going along the line, we have the base unit, which can handle up to three tools simultaneously. We have the soldering pencil, which is a uh, 65 watts. So this is actually, even though it looks physically smaller, which it is physically smaller, of course, it has more power capability than my old weller that's over there with the great big wedge tip in it. We have the hot air gun, which is 200 watt, the WXHAP 200, which is 24 volt at 200 watts for that one. I think the weller tip is 24 volts as well at 65 watts. We have the hot air gun here, which is, does it say on it? Yep, it does. 120 watts at 240 volts. All right, so that's for desoldering. And you obviously, all the tips we were looking at before would screw into here. So we'll look at how they change in a moment and give the desoldering a go. And then finally, we have the tweezers for surface mount uh, components where you can heat both sides simultaneously using this small tool here. And this one is 12 volts at 80 watts at the rating. And they all will plug into this base station here. Obviously, I can only plug in three out of these four components at the same time. So let me clear the bench away a little bit. Oh, and of course, last but not least, the pick and place tool. So you can have three heating tools. So I, I um, you know, and you can just mix and match any of your three tools on the station that you want. Um, this last one, of course, doesn't have any heating or anything. It's purely based on using the vacuum. So that's everything. So let's clear the bench and uh, get this thing powered up and have a look at what we can do with it. Give it a little bit of a try.